Hi guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Grab a beverage, come on in. Let's paint. Let's talk about nothing, you guys. Let's talk about whatever happens to randomly pop into my head at the time. So, <clears throat> what are we gonna talk about now? See, I don't even have anything in my head. It's just vacant space. Um, transfer swipes. I'm completely hooked on transfer swipes. I gotta admit it, I'm an addict. Um, I absolutely love them and right now I have no interest in moving forward and trying anything else. So that's what we're going to do. So I've been playing with kind of really, really simple colors and not so much in your face colors and the end results are really, really pretty. Quite soft. Um, I just resined my piece the other day that I think I called 50 Shades of Grey and it came out just lovely. Lovely, lovely. I'll sh if I remember, I'll show you at the end of the video. So we're going to kind of play with those same colors. I'm going to try to be semi-professional and discuss what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Here's our bloom puddle for our swipe. So this is Black Onyx from Walmart. It's the only black paint that I use. Um, I usually use it directly out of the can. Sometimes it can be really, really thick. It's a pre-mixed Walmart paint. It's called CIL Platinum. This is eggshell. Uh, generally, I've been using semi-gloss, but I screwed up, got eggshell by mistake, and I actually like eggshell better because my colors kind of, almost like they grip onto it. So I'm gonna do layers on top of layers because that's what I'm into right now. So there's my first puddle, and we're just gonna Build on to that so my paints are mixed exactly as they would be with blooms. Anything else, I will give you the heads up. So this is black on black. So this is black. What is it? Um, boom gel. Blah, blah, blah. See, I've lost my professionalness already. Black boom gel. Uh, mixed up is a color. It's just mixed with my pouring medium. I don't know if you guys can see it on the video, but the black boom gel is considerably blacker than the black onyx from Walmart. And the boom gel just kind of does some fun things. It really does. It's hard to describe. It just changes things a little bit. So this one is golden ochre. Um, now you can see my paints are super, super stringy. And this paint, this particular color of paint, has a little bit of Liquitex string gel in it. So I think I went through a video with you guys a couple days ago about, I got all these pigments from the secondhand store. Um, these bottles are just crap because the paint, the pigment has all separated. So I put them all into little Dixie cups, mix them all up. I, all I did was add my pouring medium. It was still kind of lacking something and possibly because my pouring medium doesn't have as much acrylic binder as an acrylic paint would have. So I use the string gel, uh, super fun to play with, holds all these weird, funny little lines quite well. So I've put it in a few of my colors. So this is TLP Brulee, also string gel. And then this is boom gel in silver, just mixed with pouring medium. So I'd like to take some of these little strings of color and maybe kind of string them out all through the pour and just to see what happens it, it'll just basically be experimental so this one is amsterdam white acrylic mixed about 50 50 with deco art white satin enamel and just pouring medium no gel no nothing and it's a little tiny bit thinner than the rest of my colors and i'm really i was hoping to kind of get that cloudy effect i tried it a while ago uh, didn't work as planned, which sort of isn't a surprise because that's what happens when you plan something, it doesn't work. Okay, this is the new TLP Honeycomb. Just regular pouring medium mix. I'm going to go over this with silver again. And then we're going to blow this whole puddle out using 
We're going to start with white cell mix. We may start and finish with white or we may add some black. Uh, white cell mix. Standard Amsterdam titanium white mixed about two and a half parts Australian flow troll to one part paint. Uh, that's what I like. I know three to one, four to one. I prefer like two and a half to one because I like it a little bit thicker than most. Um, I highly recommend you guys, you know what, just take your mixes, mix small, just tweak them to suit yourself. And keep in mind, and I tell you guys this quite frequently, environmental factors play a huge role in this. So consistency is key with all of these pores. And if it's too hot in my house, my paints are too thin. If it's too cold, my paints are too thick. So you kind of have to really just figure out what works for you, get a picture of that in your mind, and stick with what works for you. All right, the blowout. Okay, that was the world's worst blowout. Don't do it my way, do it your way. If that works, that was terrible. Terrible, terrible, but we're gonna put this aside. We're really just kind of looking for a cool puddle, same as always. And because we're going to scoop this up and stretch it out, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we have big gobs of cells or if we have spots of color. It doesn't matter because we're going to pick it up or scoop or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to transfer it onto a clean prepared tile. And by transferring, it allows us to create a whole different pattern than just your bloom. And, and how you rotate your hand and how you hold it and what your underneath color is, that's entirely up to you. And every single little change you make will change the outcome. So I am going to try to blow this out because I don't want all that concentration of white. All right. So we're going to pop that aside and then we are going to flood my standard. I lost my stool, you guys. Oh, there it is. My standard 4x16 white, white ceramic tile. Um, I don't do anything to these. I give them a little bath in some hot soapy water and that's all. And we're going to use the same base coat. So again, Walmart Black Onyx CIL. straight out of the can. Eggshell's not as thick as semi-gloss. Semi-gloss is like, I've referred to it before as tar in a jar. It like almost glops out with a spoon. This is a little bit better for consistency. Still incredibly thick. So it's really important when we're stretching out our pattern that we really stretch it and get enough paint off that it doesn't crack and go all wonky. All right, the transfer. So as you guys know, again, it's important to find a tool that works for you. I use these little paper plastic cards. You can use cards from the dollar store, cards from the secondhand store. You don't have to buy anything. Like you probably have tons of stuff around your house that will work. This just works for me. I don't know why. It's just, it feels right in my hand and it's easy to scoop up and it just works. So we're gonna take our puddle of stuff and we're gonna lay our card as flat as we possibly can and we're gonna go relatively slow. We're gonna let the paint sort of dictate at the speed it wants to travel. And then we're gonna lie down. We're just gonna put this down. So I'm gonna to try to keep my pattern in the center because we all know I'm going slow and I'm I'm just going slow. We all know that this technique, we spread our paint out quite far. And so if you, quite often I start on an edge and what I find is when I spin it or when I tip it, I lose this beautiful pattern because I haven't allowed enough space for my paint to like spread out. So try to keep your pattern relatively center. I'm gonna do the same thing again, picking up on this side. And I'm going to come in right here 
So the turning of the hand creates these little swirls. And I am pressing down quite hard. I'm actually kind of letting it just kind of flow into my paint, if that makes sense. And we have enough of a puddle left over. So we're gonna put our leftover puddle aside and we're not gonna spin this because I just spent like the better part of a day cleaning up my room and I don't really do it again. I just don't. So we're gonna tip this and we're gonna just tip it slowly. And we're just gonna let the paint kind of stretch out for now. This may very well be an undercoat or a layer. And I may very well go over this. That's kind of my happy place right now. And I really, really, I really like the layered look. And I've, I've been pretty satisfied with my recent layered pores. Um, I don't generally do multiple colors, although I have. I usually stick to the same color palette and I pour right over top of it again. But you can definitely put a cooler coat, a cooler color on the bottom and a warmer color on top or vice versa. It's entirely up to you. You know, we are all like diverse and unique and individual and it's a, it's a really good thing because what a boring world it would be if we all liked the same things so it's really you know it's your practice you claim it like i'm not really one for like the kapow bold colors although i do paint in them because it's not all about me although it should be um but these are my colors these are always my colors that kind of make me smile like it's kind of it sounds sick doesn't it what a freak they make me happy you guys these are my colors that make me happy i really like warm earthy tones the majority of my house is decorated i'm gonna stand you guys on in just for a second and see if we can get some of this pretty lacing down to the bottom and then back so always come back to where you came from like a migratory bird or a salmon. Back to the home river. Okay, we're just gonna keep swiggling this down slowly, slowly, slowly. So in order to stretch out your cells, they have to go over the edge to really stretch them. They'll only stretch a certain amount if they don't go over an edge, so it's quite important if you want the big cells to take it right off this is a totally stupid way to hold my arm you guys and I know that but I'm trying to get this suction down to the bottom now and then we'll take a look at it and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do absolutely love this brulee i'd like to get this farther down but i would like to get it over so i'm going to just keep tipping and tilting until i get it where i want it keeping in mind that we're going to build layers it's hard to talk about paint you guys it's way easier to talk about your grandkids and how getting old socks and you know, your arms flop and wave at you in the mirror in the morning. It's much easier than talking about the paint. But I'm going to do both. I'm going to multitask this year, you guys. So tell me, tell me in the comments, who set New Year's resolutions? And who sets them and then vaults on them? So I have a theory about resolutions. Here we go, here comes the chattering part. I have a theory about resolutions. I don't set a resolution for myself, but I set goals. And by setting goals, I have, I have 365 days to accomplish the goal before 
a not accomplished goal is considered a failure. So with a resolution, I always figure, you know what, people start on January 1st, and by January 2nd, you've already eaten half the butter tarts in the pan, and so you've already wrecked your goal or your resolution. So by setting a goal, I have 364 more days to not touch those bloody butter tarts. And then I've accomplished my goal. Smart, huh? All right, so this is definitely gonna be a bottom layer, I think. I want more of this, more of that, and less of that. All right, let's put this aside for just a jiffy, and we're gonna take our same puddle in our same colors, and we're not even gonna build on it. We're just gonna run some more of the same colors back over this. So we're gonna re-scoop with our same soggy piece of paper now, and deposit some more paint. But first, I want to try this stringy paint. I said that and then I didn't do it. Um, 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 um. Where are we going to go with this, you guys? All right, let's just do it. It's too thick. Okay, well, I screwed that right up. All right, so let's scoop up. And then let's look at what I just messed up and see if we can fix it in the scoop. Or let's just leave little peekaboo sections. We can do another another scoop over this there's no rules you guys no rules whatsoever so i think i'm gonna come in one more time already i'm gonna come in on the bottom so this time i'm putting my hand down fairly firmly and i'm digging right into the black paint and it just is going to create some more shadows. And yeah, that's my plan. So one of my other, <clears throat> my, one of my other goals for this year is to actually do a video and introduce myself, which is kind of scary. I'm pretty happy being a freak with gloves on behind the scenes. But, you know, I talk to the same group of predominantly ladies all the time. And I told some of the other day on my YouTube channel, it's really like connecting with old girlfriends to me. Like I see this little pretty, the, the smiling faces in the upper left hand corner of my screen. And I think, oh, there's Cheryl. Oh, there's Lizzie. Oh, there's, there's Joanne. And you guys only ever see like dirty gloves and you hear my chatter. So on a good hair day, I am going to try to do a video and actually introduce myself so that maybe you can put a face to the dirty hands and the messy hair that you guys get to see. And I kind of think it might be fun for me. I don't know. I'm not... I don't know, I'm pretty happy flying under the radar, but I have gotten comfortable. I think I said the other day I went from silent videos to only talking a tiny bit to sharing my whole life story with total strangers. So it's maybe time, maybe time you guys meet me. It's always funny, you know what, you talk to people all the time, like you might talk to somebody regularly on the phone that you don't know from an office and then you'll go in to meet them and they're not at all what you were expecting so you may be in for a big surprise with me you won't be i'm exactly as i say i am all right my friends through my tutorial talking as well as my chitter chatter i think i'm okay with this i really i i super super like this thick 
chunky globby lacing. I think it's really cool. I would like to have a little bit less of that white. <sighs> and my thought would be to add another swipe, but I don't really want to because I don't want to wreck the sections that I do like. So my Deco Art White Satin Enamel isn't quite as maybe thin as I would like to have it. I was kind of going for a little bit more of that cloudy look. Um, and I may, I may thin it down just a tiny bit more and we'll try again. I might just keep fiddling with this though. So as you can see, the more you stretch it out, the bigger those cells and lacing become when your paints are mixed correctly. And that's why I say your consistency is absolutely key and no one can teach you consistency you guys you can watch my tutorial you can watch every tutorial you want and you really have to play with it and you have to make it your own and it's frustrating and it's annoying and kind of yeah it's a bit of a piss off excuse the words you know what I've been there I, I told you guys this story many times I tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried, and tried to do fluid art and I wasted a buckets and buckets of paint and I got totally ticked off and more than once I felt like just chucking it all out the kitchen window and I put it all away for over a year and then I drug it all back out again well and I put it away I stamped like a giant L on my head for loser because I thought like I just can't do this and then when I brought it all back out it I just approached it differently there was less need to learn and more of a want. And it made a huge difference because I just didn't give a crap. I was just gonna fart around and try to figure things out. And I did, and it took a while. You guys can all do this. One of these days, I'm done there, you guys. I think that's pretty cool. One of these days, if I can find it, I'll show you my first ever big tile that I thought I was, like I'm talking really big, it was like 12 by I don't know, maybe 24. I was super proud of it. And now I look at it and think, oh dear God, why'd you even keep it? But it's a good thing to keep because it's growth. Like I can look at it now and, and see where I've come. And just the fact that, you know, by playing and by adding this or taking away that or thickening this or thinning that, I've learned tons, tons. I've learned more from my mistakes than I have from my successes. And the videoing has helped me in multiple reasons. One, because I said I'm kind of having flying under the radar. And now I'm just a chatterbox. And two, it's really good to video what you're doing, even if you don't air it, because you can go back and learn from your mistakes or perfect what you did right and kind of advance. And it, it's a really, really valuable tool. So give it some thought. All right, my friends. I'm going to put you on hold. I'm gonna bring you down and show you all this funky, thick lacing and pretty colors. And then, who knows, I may strip down and we'll paint again. All right, guys, hang tough. All right, I'm back. I'm back from a really weird angle. Oh, and there goes my focus. So black is super, super hard for me because my lights are behind me, but you guys will get a good idea of how super thick and chunky. Hang on, let's just darken this a bit. Let's try that. How thick and chunky this lacing is. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Definitely pretty cool. This section here is really quite neat and it will change because of the white satin enamel. And then this section up here is really pretty as well. All right, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, hopefully you learned something other than you know, the obvious that getting old socks and paint pouring can be a pain in the butt. Um, and you know what? I'm going to try. I, anytime I change my mediums or I change anything, I put it in the description box. So follow along in the description box and click on that for other artists too, you guys. It's like lots of them are just jam-packed full of really valuable information. All right, my friends. Love you and leave you here. Thank you so much for chilling with me tonight in my messy space. Bye, guys.